a person on a budget can pick up a bargain. Good quality secondhand clothing and footwear, as well as other bits and pieces like pillows, pillowcases, duvets, if you happen to be into um, the camping and you need some fresh supplies. You might even find the odd thing in there like a flask or a tent. You just never know, do you? Secondhand shop, they always come recommended. Always well worth a look round. Virukeskus is a large shopping complex right in the centre of the town. You can't really miss it. If you need to get here, you only have to ask anybody pretty much. Even a tourist will have heard of Virukeskus or will have seen it. Um, underneath is the Virukeskusa Busi Terminal. The reason why I wanted to point this out was you might get confused because this gets called the bus station. It's right at the heart of the city, but it's not the bus station you're likely to be needing if you're getting a bus to another country or to another city in Estonia at some distance from Tallinn. This is the very much local bus terminal. So if you're getting a bus just to a small place nearby, just outside of Tallinn, this is likely to be the bus station you need. Underground, underneath the Virukeska shopping mall, opposite this large, very noticeable Tallink hotel. The actual bus station that you may well be arriving at from Narva, if you're coming from the east, or from Tartu, or Pärnu, or Riga, is about a, what shall we say, 25 minute walk from here, heading off in that direction. So, although there's a good connection from that bus station to the centre of the city where you're most likely to be staying, you can hop on a tram or a bus from there. This is the other bus station more central but you probably need to best ignore it and don't anticipate that you'll be arriving here. Okie dokie. Earlier on you might remember I mentioned a district here in the centre of Tallinn called Rotomani, a former industrial area which has been renovated and repurposed. Many of its buildings um, sadly torn down. Others remain in part or in whole but their interiors developed for modern day shops, office space, apartments. The usual type of reinvigoration of cities it seems which has been going on across Europe and just on the corner of Rotomani here at Coca-Cola Plaza, there's a big advertisement for an Estonian movie which came out a while ago called Aptika Melchior. I thought that was the name. Honestly, I did. Just wanted to double check. I wanted to call him Alchemist Melchior because I think that's probably what it translates to in English. Anyway, um, just a different slant on uh, Estonian culture. The movie's uh, done extremely well, so well in fact, that while it keeps running on at the Estonian cinemas, it's also developed an interest abroad. So much so that I understand at least one foreign company is looking into developing the story of Melchior into a series which I'm not saying it's HBO, I'm not saying it's Netflix, I got no idea, but apparently Aptika or Alchemist Melchior could be coming to uh, a wider audience and in a different language, perhaps English, perhaps German, I'm not sure, as a, tele as a television series. Um, so 
something to watch out for. And actually, why not get in early and watch the movie? It comes with great reviews and um, learn a bit of Estonian medieval history while you're at it. Just down the side of that Coca-Cola Plaza is the district of the Rotomani industrial site I mentioned earlier. Over there, they're calling it Rotomani City. Well, ain't that pretty? Some of the buildings I can see are waiting to be uh, converted into something else. Others are taking shape and form as restaurants and what have you. But it's clearly a work in progress. And while there are some interesting architectural features here to catch the eye, I can't help feeling a little bit sad. I did say in a hostel here, which as fate would have it, was a part of the same chain um, of hostels, the 16 Euro hostels, one of which I'm staying in at the moment, Fat Margaret. And about, oh gosh, eight, ten years ago, I also happened to be in Tallinn and I chose to stay at a hostel here. But when I say I stayed at a hostel here, it, it didn't look like this. Changes have been made. For the better or for the worse, I'm not sure. But everybody's different and there will be those who enjoy city life so much that they relish the prospect of being able to buy one of these apartments with a wine bar, cafe selection of restaurants and the city itself right on their doorstep. I know Tallinn's been popular with Finns for absolutely years because they found they've been able to come here if they worked remotely and rent out their apartment in Helsinki or Tampere or elsewhere in Finland for far more money than they have to fork out for Tallinn rental. And whether that's a theme that's continued, I'm not sure because I'm just guessing that there'll be certain apartments here which are extremely expensive if you're looking to buy. And I think this building across the road here, if memory serves me correctly, is the Estonian Architecture Museum. I might have remembered that incorrectly, but I think that's what it is. How much emphasis is given to modern architecture over historical architecture? I have no idea. You can also explore space here. A century of Estonian architecture. Okay, so the exhibition currently, at least, is focusing very much on recent architectural development through the 1900s into the early 2000s. Well, that gives you a little glimpse of what you might expect to see if you choose to visit. Here we are on the back side of the former Rotterman district which still retains its name. In fact, here we've got Rotterman's name on the top of this building. And if we look just over to the left, we can see on the top of the building there, it's even Rotterman City. So whether you call it Rotomani, the Rotterman Quarter, 
The Rotterdam Quartel. Rotterdam City. There's no shaking the name Rotterdam. Even with all these works going on, reconstruction everywhere. In some places they're trying to retain some of the old stonework buildings and the old furnace chimneys. Can't escape Rotterdam. Obviously made a lasting impression on the city. As you'll see in the background there, we've come pretty much full circle and with the two parts of the memorial in the foreground, those large steel bent pieces representing the hull of the, the Estonia ferry which sank, the old town in the background, but I wanted to draw your attention just across the road here to this unexpected little memorial. Uh, in truth, I don't know the history of it or exactly the relevance, but I do recognise the name on this stone. And of course, I recognise the colours of Estonia, the Estonian flag there, the blue, black and white, and also the yellow and sky blue of Ukraine. Down here on this stone, which at first I thought, is, is this a grave marker? But it can't be, because it talks about the national poet of Ukraine, Taras Shevchenko. I don't know what happened on the 14th of October 2004. I really need to go and Google that. Something happened in 1842 and I'm ashamed to say I don't remember if that was the year that Taras Shevchenko was born. Uh, but here people still remember obviously and to have placed some flowers out of respect and have adorned the tree that stands here. Looks to be a hazelnut tree or an acorn tree um, with these ribbons. And now time for breakfast, a late breakfast again, back at the ranch, which is just a two minute walk away. Good old fat Margaret's. <laughs> 